That needs to be sitting next to your shampoo, it needs to sit next to your conditioner, uh, your Shea Moisture, whatever products you're using for curly hair, you need to have. Welcome back to my channel, Taylor Tribe. My name is Terrell Taylor. I appreciate each and every last one of you for tuning in to watch my videos. Today we're gonna to be talking about the things we thought was good for curly hair is actually bad. Things that you do every single day, something you probably just did before you watched this video for curly hair. If you haven't done so, take the opportunity right now to subscribe and become a part of the Taylor Tribe. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you like it, share it, put it in your playlist as well. My name is Terrell Taylor. Let's get into it. One of the first things I wanna to talk to you about uh, that you actually thought was good is actually buying the wrong products. A lot of you are using the wrong products. I get questions and questions, not only in the comments section, but actually on Instagram and Snapchat and Twitter about should you use this product, should you use that product or that product. Uh, you're using the wrong products. Please listen to me closely. You're using the wrong products. So what I want you to do is actually find out your hair type. You know, I always talk about finding out your hair type. That's very important. That's very key to identify what your hair type is before you can actually buy products for your particular hair type. Every hair type is different. So if you have a 4A, uh, it's gonna be different from a 4C. A uh, 4C is very coily, it's very dense. A 4A is actually very looser, uh, more bouncier in the curl pattern. So the products that work for this particular hair type might not work for that hair type. Uh, so find out what it is, and then you'll be able to research and see what products is made for your particular hair type. Which leads to my next thing, stop overusing products. You're definitely overusing products. A lot of you don't know that there's a label on the back with directions. The directions are there for a particular reason. Um, on Whether it's coconut oil, conditioner, shampoo, whatever type of oils that you're using, make sure you're using the one for your particular hair type and make sure you're not overusing products. Overusing products is gonna build on oils, it's gonna build up dirt, uh, it's gonna weigh your hair down, it's gonna be much heavier, um, it's gonna be difficult to manage and also difficult to wash your hair with so much build up product. So make sure you're not overusing the products. Uh, pay attention to the directions and the instructions on the back of each label, uh, whether you're buying conditioner, shampoo, or et cetera, et cetera. A lot of you probably don't know, but actually using the towel is very, very bad for hair, uh, and particularly curly hair. Make sure you're switching from a towel to a t-shirt. A uh, t-shirt is very detrimental to your hair. Um, also, this is gonna be stripping the nutrients and it's gonna be stripping the key vitamins that's enriched in your hair. Uh, so make sure that you're using a t-shirt. Uh, you can pick any t-shirt that you have laying around, whether it's an old t-shirt or a new t-shirt. Uh, you're just drying off your hair, but make sure that if you're using a towel, it's gonna be stripping your hair of the essential oils, uh, as well as the essential nutrients that's built up in your hair already. Because uh, a towel is very rough for your hair. A shirt is a lot more softer uh, in the material and a t-shirt is a lot more um, better for your hair than it is using a towel as well. So if you're using a towel, make sure you stop and use a t-shirt going forward now. Another thing that you probably didn't know was bad for hair is actually hot water. A lot of you actually wash your hair in very, very hot water. Uh, start using cold water. Cold water is good for your hair. You gotta remember, you wash your clothes, you wash dishes, uh, and you bathe in hot water, very hot water. Uh, so imagine what that's doing to your hair. That's stripping the nutrients. Um, your hair is very fragile and it's very brittle. Make sure you're actually using warm water because I know switching to cold water would be definitely difficult. So if you're not used to the cold water, make sure you're using warm water and gradually switch to cold water. Now I will say we're coming upon the winter season. So I know washing your hair with cold water could be quite difficult. So definitely switch to warm water. And so when we get to the fall as well as the summer and spring, then you can definitely go and switch to cold water and stop using hot water as well. Bleaching, yes, bleaching could be bad for your hair. The reason why, uh, because a lot of you are over bleaching your hair. You could bleach your hair once in a while, I would say every six to about eight months or so, um, but a lot of you are bleaching your hair every other week, every month, every other month. That's very bad for curly hair and it's very bad for hair as well, uh, cause that can lead to permanent damage to your hair follicles because your hair follicles can get burnt in the process of the dyeing method. Um, cause a lot of you don't really pay attention to what the instructions say um, and you're doing it yourself. Uh, if you're gonna do your hair and get it dyed, make sure it's professionally or you read the directions very carefully um, in detail as well because that could be very damaging to your hair if you're over bleaching your hair and if you're bleaching your hair quite often, that's very detrimental. 
Um, I know a lot of you want the Odell Beckham Jr. haircut or the Thought Boy haircut. That's fine, but make sure you're monitoring the, the time in between of hair dyes so you actually don't permanently damage your hair because there's nothing you can do to heat damage besides cut it off. Um, so make sure you're not over bleaching your hair. Gels, yes, gels. Gels could actually be bad for curly hair. Um, the reason why, because gels, a lot of them, not all of them, have alcohol in it. So if you're gonna use a gel, make sure it's alcohol free and actually made for curly hair as well because the gel can actually harden up and it's gonna leave a white residue. A lot of you don't want white residue in your hair. That's because of the gel. So make sure you're using gels with alcohol free. There's a lot of gels out there that's alcohol free, but you probably didn't know you need to pick gels with alcohol free. Uh, so when you're doing like a wash and go, you just put gel in your hair. Um, not only is it going to not leave a white residue, but it's not gonna leave flakes in your hair. Which leads to my next thing. Do not go to sleep with wet hair. Going to sleep with wet hair can be very bad. Um, the reason why, because your hair is going to be very wet and when you lay down on your pillow, it's going to be matted down and it's actually going to cause damage to your hair. Um, it's going to strip the key nutrients and the vitamins and the rich oils that's already in your hair. Uh, so make sure you're not going to bed with wet hair. If you must get out the shower, um, I would say blow dry your hair for 30 minutes on cold air. Um, and then that way it'll be a little bit damp. Um, as well instead of wet hair, but if you must go to bed and go to sleep Make sure your hair is damp and not wet which leads to not sleeping on satin pillowcases um, You definitely if you're able to switch to satin pillowcases because satin pillowcases are very good and particularly to sleep on and with because it's going to lock in the moisture and it's going to moisturize your hair and it's going to keep the oils locked in as well. Um, which leads to the next thing is using a pick. Um, if you're using a pick, I would say actually if you're using a metal pick, uh, throw it away, stop using it right now because that's breaking off your hair and it's causing split ends. If you must use a pick, use a plastic pick like this one here. Uh, you can find this at any local beauty supply, it's very cheap. Um, very affordable just switch to a plastic pick but I actually don't recommend picks at all but if you actually must use a pick switch from metal to a plastic pick one more thing and lastly I want to touch bases on is not using apple cider vinegar apple cider vinegar is something that you need to have in your household right now um, that needs to be sitting next to your shampoo it needs to sit next to your conditioner uh, your shea moisture whatever products you're using for curly hair you need to have apple cider vinegar right next to it that's very good for your hair it's going to not only lock in the key nutrients, but it's going to put in proteins. Uh, it's going to give your hair back the vitamins and everything that it's missing. Uh, so definitely make sure you add apple cider vinegar to your hair. All you do is put it inside of a bottle. Um, just pour a little bit inside of a bottle and then you will just spray that and moisturizer on your hair as well. You can put apple cider vinegar in it and you can put coconut oil in it. Uh, just spray it to your hair. It's going to add moisture. Uh, it's going to make your curls very loose and more curlier and defined as well. So Taylor Trap, I hope this advice that I just gave, also these tips, are able to assist you on your natural hair journey to get better curls as always. Um, I'm here to actually let you know um, you can achieve curlier hair um, if you follow the steps that I mentioned in all of my videos as well. Um, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you like it, share it, put it in your playlist as well. And remember, good people, it's never too late to tailor your life the way you want to see it. I'm Terrell Taylor. Can't wait to see you next time.